Hi, in this chapter of chemistry in 10 minutes, we are going to learn how a sample is made to record a nuclear magnetic resonance spectrum. The first step in the determination of the structure of a chemical compound. We shall see as well some of the features of a nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer. Come along with me, let's go to the lab, let's start the demo. The first thing we need is a sample. It can be either solid or liquid. In this case, our sample is a solid. Using a balance and a vial, we are going to weigh a small amount of the sample. Once we tear the vial, we introduce in it, with the help of a spatula, a small amount of the sample, taking care of not spilling anything on the table. An amount close to 20 mg is right for a normal sample, although the spectrum could be recorded for a much smaller amount. Since we are recording a liquid state NMR spectrum, we need to dissolve the sample. The solvent has to be deuterated. There are many chloroform, acetone, water, dimethyl sulfoxide, methanol, tetrahydrofurin, toluene, pyridine, etc. With the help of a 1 or 2 milliliter syringe, we take 0.6 ml of the deuterated solvent. In this case, we are using chloroform, which is the most common solvent in NMR. The solvent is introduced in the vial in order to dissolve the sample. The solution is vigorously shaken to make sure that everything gets dissolved. The solution has to be carefully observed to ascertain that there's no solid particles nor any turbidity. Since our sample is turbid, we have to filter it. We shall use a pastel pipette with a small piece of paper rolled on its tip. In this way, we take the liquid into the pipette and avoid the solid particles going into the NMR tube. Otherwise, the quality of the spectrum would be very low. The solution is then transferred to the NMR tube without spilling it. The NMR tube is kind of precision test tube. It exactly has 5 mm of diameter and the solution must reach at least 5 cm in height. The tube is conveniently stopped. Now we are all set to go to the spectrometer and perform the recording of the spectrum. Elena, our NMR specialist, has taken the tube to the NMR room. This lab is specially conditioned to contain the spectrometer. Elena has started to perform a series of preliminary operations in order to record the NMR spectrum. But she's not explaining anything. Elena, please stop, go back and show us what you are doing. Thank you, Elena. Our NMR spectrometer consists of three main parts. The magnet, the console and the computer from which we can control everything. The sample is introduced in the magnet by the upper part of the big metal cylinder that contains a supercooled, superconducting solenoid that creates an intense magnetic field. The cylinder is actually a huge thermos containing the magnet coils that are sunk in liquid helium at 4 degrees Kelvin. The very low temperature is essential to make the coils be superconducting and thus get the strong magnetic field. By means of an air current, the tube is introduced in the influence area of the strong magnetic field. Even though the building of the magnetic field requires the very low temperature mentioned before, the tube with the sample is at room temperature, believe it or not.
The NMR spectrometer talks to the sample by means of a special piece of equipment called probe. The probe is used to irradiate the sample with the necessary radio frequency that will excite the nuclei. The probe also serves as the transmitter that hears the excited nuclei and their signal that will be turned into the final spectrum. By means of the appropriate preamplifiers and the complex electronics contained in the console, the sample interacts with the radio frequency and yields the signal from which the spectrum can be obtained. Let's now watch very attentively the operations that Elena started to perform but didn't show us. The clean tube is introduced into a turbine that must be placed at a given height. We now turn on the current of air that makes the tube be smoothly inserted into the magnet. The air current maintains the tube floating in the upper part of the magnet. We now turn it off and the tube smoothly but boldly goes all the way down into the probe. The turbine into where the tube was inserted serves as a rotor to spin the sample. Immediately, the signal from the deuterons of the solvent is received and analyzed. The radio frequency is thus locked and secured at the appropriate values to perform the right experiment. In this case, a proton NMR spectrum. The magnetic field has to be finely tuned to get the maximum performance from the spectrometer. This operation takes several minutes and one has to be very patient to get a spectrum of the maximum possible quality. The spectrometer is now well set to start acquiring the necessary electronic data from the sample. With a few keystrokes at the keyboard of the computer, the signal starts to be received. The signal from the sample looks pretty weird and is mysteriously called free induction decay, FID in short. The final FID signal is built from many individual FIDs, in this particular case 128 scans. This is what makes NMR a very sensitive and powerful spectroscopic technique. For very diluted samples the acquisition may be extended overnight, for instance, with thousands of accumulated FIDs or scans. The final FID is turned into the spectrum by means of a mathematical operation called Fourier transformation that is swiftly performed by the computer. You may finally take the recorded data to anywhere else with a pen drive or by means of the intranet. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Cheerio!